Welcome to another ABC Grab and Go on demand webcast. In this session, we're going to show you how to perform can line diagnostics by using a multimeter and the can line. The can line, or controller area network, is the main communication line for the fan hole coaches. If the can line is shorted or has too much or not enough resistance, it can cause havoc with the coach electrical system. Some of the systems you can see is no start, ABS failure, transmission issues, or you could also get J1939 symbols on the dash display. In this grab and go, we'll show you how to check the can line itself, where to check on the can line, what your high voltage should be, what your low voltage should be, and what resistance should be on the can line. The can line system is a very sensitive electrical component. Never shorten or lengthen a can line. Whenever you have to replace a can line or repair a can line, it's best to replace it as a whole. Adding or putting butt connectors in a can line creates resistance and can play havoc with your J1939 or multiplex system. It can actually cause no start J1939 codes into your system. And it can also give you false codes from any of your ECUs that are connected to your can line. So anytime that you need to repair a can line, the best practice is actually to replace that whole length of can line. For can lines, they can never be more than 40 feet long. And that is just to keep up with the information that's being traveled through the can line. Going longer than 40 feet can actually take the can line and cause communication issues. It can also deteriorate the, si the signal that's being sent across the can line. The proper tools must be used to diagnose the can line. When checking the can line, you should only use a multimeter as the testing device. Do not use a test light to check the can line. Using a test light, you can't see what your high voltage is or your low voltage. You can't test resistance with the test light. And you could possibly apply external voltage or an external ground into the can line, causing a short. Do not remove termination resistors. And as we said before, the electronics are very sensitive. Incorrect connections will lead to damage. Avoid reversing polarity connections. In the next series of slides, I will show you your diagnostic ports and where you can check on the can line. This one here is the multiplex diagnostic socket located in the diagnostic box in the right-hand console of the dashboard for the C2045. Here's your diagnostic socket located in the diagnostic box in the right-hand console of the dashboard for the T2145. For the double-decker or TD925, you have a diagnostic socket located in the engine compartment rear of the coach and also another one located in the driver's area above the right windshield. On the TX, you have a diagnostic port located behind the panel in the driver's area, just to the right of the driver. And you also have a diagnostic socket located in the driver's compartment by the driver's left leg as he was sitting in the seat. And here on the CX, we have our diagnostic socket located in the diagnostic box in the right-hand console of the dashboard, as shown in the picture. And you also have it located in the driver's compartment by the driver's left leg. For your CAN bus test, the vehicle ignition should be on. There should be a voltage of more than 2.6 volts on CAN high and less than 2.4 volts on CAN low. An interrupted, inter inverted, or shorted CAN bus can be traced by measuring the voltage. And again, high side would be 2.6 volts or above. Low should be 2.4 volts or below. Voltage should never be the same. Now, with the vehicle ignition off and the coach completely powered down, 
there should be a resistance of 60 ohms between the two wires on the CAN bus. Looking at the diagnostic port to the left, you can see that I have labeled all the letters for you for each pin connector. Now, depending on how it is installed in the coach, it could be set up like this, or the diagnostic connector could actually be turned. What you want to look for is look at the picture itself. The center hole, you'll actually see where it has a little notch out. If you can determine where that notch is, you can see exactly where your pins would be located. Now, performing this test, we're going to do a resistance test to see what our resistance is in our can line. So the coach must be powered off and completely shut down. First, we'll check between pins C and D for resistance. And on a good can line, we should have 60 ohms. Now, if we check between pins C and E for resistance, I should show no resistance at all on between those two pins. If I was to determine that I had resistance there, that could lead me to believe that I could possibly have a termination resistor in the wrong line. I could have a short in one of my components. And now we will check for resistance between pins D and E. Between D and E, again, I should show no resistance or OL for open loop. Now we're going to check for our voltage. In this test, the coach must be powered on. Ignition switch must be on. First, we will check between pins C and E for voltage. Between C and E, I should show approximately 2.6 or above for voltage. Next, we will check between pins D and E for voltage. D and E will be the low side of my can line. My voltage should be between 2.4 volts or below. Again, between C and E and D and E, my voltage should never be the same. If, there's a, if the voltage is exactly the same, there is an issue with the can line itself. In this slide, we show you the J1939 3-pin Deutsch connector setup. If you look to the picture to the left, where you can actually see the plug, your pin A equals your J1939 high side. Pin B equals J1939 low side. And your pin C would be shielded. If I was checking this system, if I was checking for resistance, I would go across A and B. With the system completely plugged in and not unplugged, I should show 60 ohms. If I have unplugged one side of the can line, I should show 120 ohms. Now in this showing the integrity of the can line itself, we're going to check for resistance. With the coach powered off, if we check between pins A and B for resistance, I should show a total of 120 ohms. And the reason I would show 120 ohms is because if I'm actually checking this side of the line, I have it unplugged, so I don't have both terminating resistors in series within the line. And if I check for resistance between pins A and C, I should show OL or no resistance. If I was, again, to pick up resistance on that side of the line, that tells me I have some integrity issues with inside the can line. And next, we check between pins B and Z for resistance. And again, it should be an open or no resistance whatsoever on that side of the line. And now we're going to check for our voltages. Using the connector with the ignition switched on and the bus powered up, we're going to check between pins A and C for voltage. A being our can high and C being our shielded. Our voltage should be between around 2.6 volts or above. And checking our can low, which is pin B, we check between pins B and C for voltage and we should have 2.4 volts or below. Next we're going to talk about termination resistors. 
The nodes in the Kiva system are fitted with an internal termination resistor. If necessary, you can switch in the termination resistor simply by placing a wire bridge between pins number 3 and 5 of the C connector of the node. Devices with permanent built-in resistors must be fitted at the start or the end of the CAN bus. If you were to fit a termination resistor in the middle of the CAN bus, everything after that resistor will actually be cut off because the loop now is wherever you've set it up. If you put it in the middle, it would be set in the middle. A termination resistor is a 120 ohm resistor tied into the CAN line. Check between pins A and B for resistance you should have 120 ohms. Each CAN line will have an end and a beginning termination resistor. With both resistors tied into the CAN line, once you check it, that's what's going to give you your 60 ohms. The way you come up with this is you take how many termination resistors you have, the value of one, and you divide it. So I know I have two termination resistors. They are 120 ohms. So I take two divided by 120 and that's what gives me my 60 ohms when I do my CAN line checks. In this slide, we're going to show you an example of how checking resistor on node 5 with the system plugged in and the coach off. If you check between pins C10 and C7 for resistance, you should have 60 ohms. Next, we're going to use the schematic I'm going to show you how to check your CAN high. When you're checking the CAN high, system must be plugged in and ignition must be on. Here we're going to check at the ZR at pin C10. Once I'm checking my CAN high, my voltage should be 2.6 volts or above. Now we can check our CAN low. Going to connector C09 on the ZR, checking my CAN low, my voltage should be 2.4 or below. Now let's check the resistance of our CAN line. Here we must have the coach shut down and completely powered off. We're going to go to node 6 and on the CAN line connector C1 and C2, we're going to check for our resistance. With the system plugged in, our resistance should be 60 ohms. And as we continue to check for resistance, now we are still checking at node 6, pin C1 and C2, but part of our system is unplugged. My resistance should be 120 ohms. In this slide, if you look to the left, you can see your main CAN bus connector, which is for your main line to your ABS, TCM, MCM, or CPC. Looking at your ZR, I have showed you different points where you could check for your resistance. Again, if everything is plugged in and nothing is unplugged and everything is working correctly, you should have 60 ohms at any of these points. If you look at the node 5, if I check here between C1 and C2, Again, with everything still plugged in, coach completely powered down, I should have 60 ohms. If at any time I show 120 ohms at any of these test points, I have a problem in the CAN line where I've actually lost my terminating resistor or my line is unplugged. In this slide, this is just an example for you to take with you. When you print out this slideshow, you can actually use this when you're trying to troubleshoot your CAN line. It'll show you the way your connector is set up. It'll show you what your resistance should be between C and D, C and E, and D and E. And you can also use it to check your voltages between C and E and D and E. So in summary, we went over how to use a can line diagnostic, how to use a multimeter to check the can line, where to check the can line, termination resistors, We also went over your can high basic voltage, which should be at or above 2.6 volts. Your can low should be at 2.4 or below. Voltages, again, should never be the same for can high and can low. 
And your termination resistors are 120 ohms when out of the system. When in line and working correctly, it will be at 60 ohms. Now, when I have an issue with the CAN line or a data link, I don't even break out the computer. I actually get my multimeter and I hook into the CAN line and start checking my voltages and resistance. And that way I can see where my problem is at and what it, what it entails to repair it. And that concludes another ABC Grab and Go On Demand webcast. For questions regarding this webcast, please contact ABC's Technical Service Department at 877-427-7278. Listen for the prompts for Coach Technical Support and select appropriate options. Support is available at this number 24-7.